You've probably heard of The Conjuring movies, but have you heard of The Conjuring Mirror? The second movie hints at this when Lorraine Warren's character is in the basement of the Amityville home. But the real mirror has its own backstory. This mirror was taken from the home of 55-year-old Steven Zellner. He kept the mirror hung in a dark room, and across from it he would sit in a chair with a red light behind his back. For hours he would gaze into the mirror, and he would perform long incantations to conjure the spirit world. Initially, he was performing this ritual to ask his dead relatives to come forward. After two weeks of seeing nothing, he begins to see subtle movements out of the corner of his eye. And as weeks pass, he begins to become more obsessed with the mirror, giving it all of his energy. After months of perfecting his rituals, he claims to begin seeing full apparitions in the mirror. He also claims that he can start seeing events that are going to happen. His obsession kicks into full gear when he begins to project people from his life into the mirror itself, essentially using the mirror as a voodoo conduit, where he would envision bad things happening to people. Allegedly, some of those things had happened. With his obsession, he essentially became arrogant to the basic rules of the rituals that he was doing. And I quote, neglecting to pay an homage to Satan during these practices. After months of performing these rituals, he begins to experience paranormal activity in the house itself like hearing heavy breathing behind his back in every single room. It's claimed that objects are moving on their own and that a presence continues to wake him up every single night. After a week, he becomes so terrified that he reaches out to the church and he begs them to send a demonologist to his house. It's the church that ultimately reaches out to Ed and Lorraine Warren and asks them to go to Pennsylvania and straighten things out. Once the Warrens arrive, it's recorded that things are starting to move on their own in the house and they experience these paranormal things that Stephen was referring to. Ultimately, they bless the house in an attempt to reverse the ritual that Stephen had done in the first place. When they're done, Stephen begs them to take the mirror because he doesn't want it in his house anymore. But when the Warrens go to take the mirror home to have it further blessed by a priest, they claim that they experience two very close calls where they almost crash their car. To them, it was a clear indicator that these spirits did not want to go back to their museum to be blessed.